What's going on growers? James Pigioni coming to you live from Jersey. We are in the heart of the growing season and the gardens are in full production. So today I want to answer a question that a lot of you have been asking and that question is why am I not growing in wood chips this year? Let's go! If you've been following this channel then you know eight years ago I put this food forest in and to start it off I laid a thick wood chip mulch in the ground and then over the years the wood chips have broken down they built an incredible soil and they've grown big healthy perennials overall i'm very happy with the results but i did stop using wood chips in some areas of my garden why have i stopped using wood chips in some areas of my garden well it's because i think wood chips are an excellent garden tool when used in the proper scenario but i don't think wood chips are perfect and ideal for every single scenario in a garden for instance when i put this food forest in the wood chips were excellent for what I wanted to do because they smothered all the grass. They helped retain a lot of moisture for the trees and the wood chips slowly break down which helps build good soil over time. One of the main things that the wood chips do too is they build a soil that's dominated in fungal activity. A lot of you will notice when you put wood chips down that mushrooms start to grow. Like you have right here these small mushrooms and that will just happen naturally because these mushrooms are what we call the teeth of the forest. These are what break down the wood chips. It's not that green and brown composting process that's going to break down the wood chips. It's going to be the mushrooms when you're layering the wood chips like this. And that's what we want. This is so important because a fungal dominated soil is so good for your woody species. Because woody species love a, and trees love when you can have what's called the mycorrhizal association. This is a symbiotic relationship that goes on between some fungi and the roots of your plants. So having these wood chips can help create that perfect environment for that fungal uh, relationship, that mycorrhizal association. That's why wood chips are so perfect and so ideal when you're growing perennial species, woody ones like fruit trees, blueberries, stuff like that. But if you want to grow annuals in your garden and you want to direct seed them, things like carrots and lettuce, I don't think that a wood chip mulch is going to be ideal for that situation and this is why when it comes to growing in wood chips you can't just direct seed into the wood chips the wood chips aren't a growing medium they're simply just a mulch so what you have to do is pull back the wood chips like I did in this section here and then plant directly into the soil one of the issues that I've had is when I've done this with things like carrots or lettuce sometimes the wood chips will fall into the section and then cover that stuff up and the lettuce seeds are just a little too small to push that uh, wood chips out of the way carrots too and you can just pull the wood chips far, far back if you want really far back. But the thing is, wood chips take a long time to break down, which is perfect for woody perennials and big trees because they last a long time, the wood chips. But if you're growing annuals and it takes a long time to break down, your soil might not be adequate to grow some of your annuals just yet. Then something Jeff Lawton said gave me an aha moment. He said that your woody species, your perennials, like a fungal dominated soil and your herbaceous plants, your annuals, like, like a bacteria dominated soil, which made so much sense to me. Then I realized what Paul Gauchi was doing also. Paul Gauchi wasn't growing his annuals in wood chips. Paul was growing his annuals in the bacteria dominated soil that his chickens created in their chicken pen. So I realized all that stuff and I said, I want to create my own soil that's dominated for bacteria. To grow my annuals so i said let's do that in a square foot raised bed garden that's what we have growing here now i grow my carrots like this and i've had the best carrots that i've ever had they're looking fantastic in here we're growing so many let's see if we can grab a couple and see if tuck maybe wants to try a few tuck want a carrot boy want a carrot tuck he's laying over there because he's getting too hot he may not want one right now but we'll see if uh if we bring one over if he wants one maybe so you can see this section right here I'm just growing a bunch of carrots and stuff and they're doing real well. We're getting excellent germination and the shape of the carrots are nice because we've got this nice uh, soil that we built in here, dominated again with a bacteria dominated soil. That's so important. I'll grab a couple more carrots just to show you. It looks like Tuck showed up. I think I got a different variety over here. Want a carrot boy? Want a carrot? So when the carrots are tuck approved, we know they're good. And bringing in this compost, it may have costed me just a little more. I actually had to pay for it. So what I ended up bringing in was, I think about a yard and a half of mushroom compost. And the mushroom compost, it costed me about $45 for a yard. So I did have to invest more, but I know that overall I'm going to be getting more food. So it's going to cost me more to grow it, but I'm going to be getting more out of it. So wood chips are perfect if you want to do something on a really cheap, 
uh, almost like free budget. I started a garden in here for free a couple years ago, and it's not hard. You just gotta pay for the seeds and stuff, but you're not gonna get a super high level of production unless you add some of, the, some of that fertilization or your soil is really good already. There are some annuals though that I still like using wood chips for, like these tomatoes right here. You'll notice I just recently put this wood chip mulch down, and in the beginning of the season, in the spring, I didn't have any mulch down because I wanted the soil to heat up quickly and actually to absorb a lot of the moisture that was coming in with the rains in the spring. Now that it's super hot and we're in the middle of summer, I'll cover that soil up to retain the moisture and then also make sure that the ground is staying cooler. So now we've got this wood chip mulch down here. Just behind me, I've got tomatoes growing in my natural soil using the wood chip mulch, and they're growing fantastic right here. Again, I didn't put the mulch around the base of the plants until the plants were in the ground, transplanted, and relatively large. This way, the wood chips don't uh, knock into the stem and you know poke some of the stem and damage the plant when it's super young. These, again, in natural soil, just with the wood chip mulch, are growing real well. So it really is situational when it comes to wood chips. There's nothing really in gardening that you can say works for everything. You gotta make sure you're analyzing every situation and then attacking it with the knowledge that you have and trying to make the best of the situation. When it comes down to it, I'm still going to be using wood chip mulches all the time. And if I could go back and redo the food forest, I would have done it the same way. Put it down a nice thick wood chip mulch. The only thing I would have done different is I would have grown my annuals like this in raised beds in a more high intense production system, kind of marrying these two ideas of high production with a self-sustaining, self-replicating system, kind of getting the, both of, the best of both worlds. So that's why I want to share this video with you so you guys can try to take advantage of the things that wood chips can do that are great for you, but then also try to avoid some of the disadvantages of it, getting the most out of wood chips. To sum it up, a wood chip mulch is ideal for growing perennial woody species because it helps build a fungal dominated soil. While on the other hand, if you're going to grow a lot of annuals and stuff, a soil that's high in bacteria content is really good. So you're going to want a lot of compost and stuff. You'll notice right here we've got a perennial woody species blueberries. We've got a lot of thick mulch down and look at the size of these blueberries on this variety. These things are monsters. So we've been eating some already and there's none ripe right now but some of them are just ripening and we love these ones so much. But again we've got this thick wood chip mulch underneath this, uh, this perennial woody species. And you can see how much it's helping to retain the moisture down there. Build excellent soil. And it's already wet. When you have a huge garden like this, you can't just be out here all the time watering everything. That's one of the reasons that the thick wood chip mulch works so well. But again, it's different for your annuals. That's why you want to make sure you're always going after things with a circumstantial mindset. Not just saying, oh, this'll work or that'll work. It's worked before. That's why journaling, again, is so important for a gardener too. As opposed to the blueberry, the woody perennial, where we were just at, this situation right here is completely different. As you'll notice, a lot of the peppers and the tomatoes have started to form little fruits. So what I did was I came by just a couple days ago and I made my own soil. This is just dominated in compost and it has some organic fertilizers fertilizers in it and I went around and I just did a top dressing around all these plants. This way when we water and it rains the nutrition will go down to the base of the plants and help feed them because it's in the middle of the season. We want to make sure we're uh, giving the plants enough fertilizer and enough adequate uh, nutrition to have high high production. So now that it's the middle of the season I top dressed and it's getting very hot out. What I'm going to do is use an annual mulch for my annual plants. So I've got some rotted hay here and I would have liked to use straw because it has no seeds, but I couldn't get any. This is rotted hay. This is from over a year ago, so none of the seeds should sprout. So we'll use that as a nice annual mulch because this won't poke into my uh, lettuces and soft plants like this. If you use thick, heavy wood chips, they could poke into the plants and damage them. This uh, hay, it's very light, so the seeds can pop through it too, and it'll also break down quickly. You can also use leaves like I'm using right here. Just simple leaves just from your own backyard. Just take these leaves and run them through the lawnmower so they dice them up and they're nice and small because you don't want huge, big leaves or, the, or they will mat the ground out. You do not want that. If you're gonna use leaves, it makes you dice them up. It's pretty simple though when you think about it. The way I'm doing it now is for my annual plants, I'm making sure that I'm using an annual mulch. For my perennials, I'm using that perennial mulch, like the wood chips, breaks down slow, lasts a long time. I don't have to keep replacing it. Here, the annual mulch is perfect. There's a permaculture way of looking at things where we learn all these different techniques, like how to mulch 
and uh, companion planting and how to build a swale and they're all tools and we have these tools in our tool chest and when we walk up to a situation we need to find the grab the proper tool for the proper situation and apply that so when it comes to what mulch we need to make sure we're appropriately applying it for the situation that we're walking into because when it comes down to it we all know that the right tool for the right job makes all the difference and that's today's video growers thanks for watching i hope you enjoyed it i hope you got something out of it if you did enjoy the video hit the like button hit the subscribe button share with your friends don't forget to check out the merch down low and remember to use our amazon affiliate link whenever you're doing your shopping tuck and james james will be back to you again real soon we 